My name is Saeed Ibrahim. I came in 1993. Uh, I born in Somalia uh, and I studied in my primary school, elementary and secondary in Somalia. Uh, during my secondary years, uh, a civil war broke out in Somalia and then I uh, moved to we fled to fled, fled to the neighbor country in uh, to Ethiopia. Uh, I've lived there for a year and a half. Nineteen eighty-eight, uh, a group called SNM, uh, Somali National Movement came to the two major cities in the northern region of Somalia. Uh, they were against the government, uh, and the government of Somalia uh, at that time were, the, the, the way they governed the northern region of Somalia, and generally in, 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 in whole Somalia, was not uh, in line with the human rights. There was a lot of human rights abuses. There was a lot of inequality in terms of uh, uh, sharing the, the wealth of the country. Uh, and the education system of Somalia, whole universities of Somalia was in the southern Somalia. Uh, so that means the young person who finished secondary school in the northern region of Somalia cannot go to university in his own region and his father or mother may not be able to send them to, uh, to the capital uh, due to the financial uh, affordability of, of the family. Therefore, the government, we're not listening to people. We're not listening to the forces against her. <laughs> I remember my expectation was very high at that time. I came to Liverpool, uh, to, uh, to Heathrow. One of my relatives, relative, uh, came to me to pick me up from the airport. Uh, and then we went to some. We, we went. We came to his house, and then we tried to go to different places to see family members uh, next day. And I remember coming out of Myland station, uh, uh, train station, and there was a homeless people outside of the, ha uh, of, of the train station. I wasn't expecting that. So my uncle gave some pounds to those people. I said, what are they? And he said, they, they are British, but they are homeless. So I didn't, that didn't sink, sink in me. Uh, but he was using it in a wisdom way to see, to, to tell me that you can go far if you work hard. And if you don't work hard, you can be like them. That shifted my ideas and expectations. What were you expecting? Did you think that you just come to the UK with, with, with the pavement will be... A rich country. <laughs> a rich country. With money everywhere. <laughs> uh, employment everywhere. Uh, education is free. So everything is, you can, without working hard, you can get it easily. It's not, that's not the case. That wasn't the case and it's not the case now. The area I, when I came in Liverpool 8, there was a lot, there, there was a lot of, I can sense the, the tense, the, the, the region is, uh, the, the area is, in, in, I can I can sense that I can't. It's a kind of another ghetto, another Somalia, another Somalia, <laughs> because they, they, there was a people, gang was everywhere, drug was everywhere in, in, in Liverpool Eight. Uh, every, the police was the noise of the police everywhere, every night, everywhere. So I was thinking, where am I? Uh, a lot of young people who came same time as me. They were making money. And I was asking them, how are you making this money? And it was true. 
the drug. So I didn't like that. Uh, I went, I joined same week. Uh, I enrolled myself in college to improve my English. So I did my level one and level two in Punkfield College. Uh, used to be called at that time, Millbrook, I think. Uh, and then I went to the third year, I went to Charles Wilton College. Charles Wilton College was a college specific for the black people in the area. Disadvantaged young people who live in the area who could not make to get a good grade in, when they were living in, in, in schools. And for those of us who came who haven't had uh, good education background in terms of English and things like that. One of the area, and, 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 and it will damage your confidence sometimes. Uh, what they don't understand is that you make, you make an effort to learn this language. This is not your language. And somehow British society, they tend to think that everybody speaks, everybody in the world speaks English. So when you speak in a broken language, English, or an English with an accent, they will be surprised thinking why. There's a few countries, that, the exceptional countries, that they can understand and say, yeah, he's, he's, he's got an accent, he's a Nigerian, he's got an accent, he's a Jamaican. But when you are not from those, or Indian, but when you're not from these two, three countries, you will always, why don't you learn English? Why? What, what, how you come uh, to speak in, 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 in this accent? So one of the things was when you deal in as a customer service officer and you pick up a phone, you can't change your accent. And the expectation the customer have is that an English person will pick up the phone. And I've come across with a lot of comments. One of the worst things was, is that a Chinese takeaway? <laughs> I said, no, it's a plus 10,000. <laughs> so you will come across with a lot of uh, uh, comments. But in your heart, you have to be driven by the need of the clients. I have to, I have to give a credit to the British society. They are very tolerant, majority of them. Uh, and you wouldn't know the tolerance of the British society if you do not come from another uh, community background. Let me give you an example, for example, uh, the, the, the PMP or the other extreme uh, uh, British uh, groups. What stopping them from the minority groups? and protecting the minority groups, it's not only the law, uh, uh, but it's the majority, the, the mature ideology, uh, the, 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 how would I put it, the mature uh, tolerance of the British society. Uh, the mature, that, that itself is, shows that something will change, but it's not going to change 100%.